kind of gives a different meaning to they don't make them like they used to. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for The Holdovers. I know this movie came out last year, but it was in my top movies of 2023 lesson. I wanted to kind of just give a little ex explanation why. This is a very good reminisce for those of us who grew up watching the old 80s, 90s, and even some 70s movies. Not only just in terms of how the story plays out, not just in terms of how they went to a pretty good degree to make it technically look and sound like a 70s movie. <laughs> Every year at Barton Academy, students, faculty, and staff depart the campus for a two-week winter break. But it just has not only that wholesome feel, but that deep cut and that ending that makes you wonder. The Holdover is about a cranky teacher, played by Paul Giamatti, who has the unfortunate luck of having to look after students who have to stay at the academy over the Christmas break because some of them just have no means to go home or, in some cases, are not even welcome home. In this group is Angus Tully, played by Dominic Sessa, who does a pretty good job for his first ever role in a film. He does a marvelous job giving Angus this multi-layered character. He's smart, he's cocky, but he also has a little bit of a rebellion streak, which has some deeper meaning to his family, his past, and just how he's viewed by society. And that mirrors to Mr. Hunnam, played by Paul Giamatti, who's this cranky teacher who thinks of yesteryear and what used to be, and is kind of stuck in these old ways in this cantankerous feeling about the world and the youth, but he still is able to find some joy in few things and he's able to express that with Angus and the two form a friendship. All the while they also are working with Mary Lamb, played wonderfully by Devine Joy Randolph, but she does a fantastic portrayal as the cook of the school who also has her own history, her own problems, her own grief that she has to deal with. And as is the case with most people during the holiday season, those demons, those hollow feelings, those hurts that we have do come to the surface depending on who we are with, even if unlikely, sometimes can help you or us through those meaningful times are and sometimes we can just figure out what exactly has been the obstacle the whole time. Aside from wonderful writing and wonderful characters and wonderful acting, I really liked how this film went to the nth degree to try and nail down that 70s vibe. Costume design, the buildings which were all filmed on location, there's no sound stages, they actually were even lucky enough to get an actual snowstorm. That added nuance of the film grain added in post really looks authentic. And I don't know a better way to describe it, but that 70s sound from how people talk to moving objects to walking, that's in this movie too. Alexander Payne, the director, does a really great job of making up for downsizing. Obviously hearkening to a lot of the movies he used to watch back in the day. From beginning to end, literal ending, not just the meaning of the ending, but also how the credits come up is like watching something from The Graduate all over again. Some great soundtrack choices from Levi Sharif or Cat Stevens and a few others. I already kind of mentioned it, but the chemistry between the leads is great. I love the story and how it goes, and I really like the ending. You like how it ends, but at the same time, you're curious of what happens to these characters later on. They'll stick with you. And I'll probably keep thinking about it for a couple of days from onward. I want to watch it again, even. Humor was really, really solid. Sir, I don't understand. That's glaringly apparent. I can't fail this class. Oh, don't sell yourself short, Mr. Coates. I truly believe that you can. Even though this film has a two hour plus runtime, you won't feel it. And even though the film takes place in the 70s, it does have some relevancy to today in terms of what they're talking about, especially from Paul Giamatti's character. I really, really like this movie. I had a smile on my face the entire time I was watching it. I really regretted not seeing this in theaters. And if you had the chance to, I envy you because I really, really enjoyed this movie. So in the end, I'm feeling very generous today. I'm feeling very, very generous. I'm gonna give The Holdovers a seven out of seven. I really, really liked it. I really wish I'd seen this movie in theaters. I knew it would be good. It just got that feel from that trailer, but watching it and sitting and just thinking about it, it's not a grandiose movie. It's not a 
mind-bending movie. It's just a really, really well-made movie. And you're gonna walk away with a smile and it's gonna make you think. And that's what a lot of the 70s movies did. Both the incredibly depressing ones and the ones that weren't so depressing. Like, I still think about The Graduate to this day after having seen it 20 years ago. I still think about that ending. Kind of gave me the same sort of feel. Anyways, guys, did you see this movie? Please let me know what you thought of it. I really, really enjoyed it. I hope you guys did too. Let me know in the comments below. Until then, guys, we're already in the new year. But having put it on my best list, I really felt that this was a movie that was worth talking about. So I'm happy I get to. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. See you guys next time.